For people who walk around the Western Illinois campus regularly, there is one word that is seen and heard frequently, leathernecks. Retired history professor Larry Basalmo remembers his first time hearing the word. Well, I guess I heard the term my first year when I went to a football game over at Hanson Field and I saw the logo and the bulldog and I inquired as to why we were called leathernecks. It's an unusual tame nickname. And I was given a very brief story about where it came about and how it came about. And I really didn't think any more about it. Western Illinois has built a reputation over the past few decades for having an athletic nickname that stands out. However, as time has passed, not many people remember where Leathernecks derived from. I mean, think about it. How many people know where Leathernecks come from now? I mean, maybe a hundred years ago, everybody would have known about it. But now, you know, you use the term Leatherneck and you know it has something to do with the Marines, but you don't know what the connection is. So it's, it's an historic connection. It's traditional here now. It's become part of our identification. Um, I mean, if you were to go out in the world, any place in the United States and say, I'm from Western Illinois University, they're not going to know much about the university. And you'll say something like, well, that's where the fighting Leathernecks are. They say, oh yeah, I've heard of that. All right. So it's a little bit of a connector, like an identification for Western Illinois University. It makes us unique. The term Leathernecks has a rich history with the United States Marines and the uniforms they would wear during battle. Another Leatherneck is a Marine. And Marines in the 18th century were on ship, fighting ships. They were armed, they were not sailors. They wore different color uniforms and their job was when, a, when two ships fought each other at sea, one tried to board the other, boarding parties, and those were always led by Marines. They were trained to fire weapons in hand-to-hand -hand combat and they were armed with what were called cutlasses, which were swords. And to protect their necks from sword slashes, Marines wore a three or four inch high leather collar that fastened in the back from here to their chin which prevented being decapitated. Now the United States military tradition comes from the British. The British had Marines. And when the United States established the Navy in the 1790s, they also established Marines. To this day, Marines are essentially administered under the United States Navy. And so American Marines wore the same leather neck protectors. And one story is the sailors on those ships referred to the Marines as leather necks. As far as Western's use of the word Leathernecks as their athletic nickname, the story begins with the arrival of a dedicated Marine veteran. A young man who joined the Marines and fought in World War I was a man named Ray Hansen. Hansen, I think, was a, was a, 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 a came out of Minnesota, and he um, performed heroically at the Battle of Belleau Wood in 1918 in France. He was wounded. He saved the wounded comrade. He was under fire for a long time. He got a Navy Cross. He got a French Croix de Guerre, which is a high ranking. Uh, and he got a Silver Star, plus a Purple Heart. When the war is over with, Rock Hansen, Ray Hansen is his real name, went to Springfield College in Massachusetts, which happened to be where they invented basketball. And while there, he took a course in football fundamentals from the famous coach, Newt Rockney. And Rockney kind of became a mentor for uh, Ray Hansen and helped him get his first coaching job here, first college coaching job here at Western in 1926. When he arrived to Western, Hansen wanted to build a tradition of toughness. Uh, it, it was more about tradition which was Rock Hansen's goal was he wanted this to be like the Marine Corps and like Notre Dame. He wanted us to have a great tradition of athletics and he wanted us to be thought of as warriors, you know, hardworking, fighting individuals. It was the Marine mindset that Hansen had that inspired him to want to change the Western Illinois athletic nickname to Leathernecks. My understanding was that Western's athletic teams were simply called the teachers. And because this was originally been a teacher's college, 
which is not a very inspiring name. You know, the fighting teachers doesn't sound very good, does it? Um, and it was his idea because of his connection to the Marines, his, his devotion to the Marines, I guess you never really leave the Marine Corps, um, that he thought this would be a, a kind of good thing to do. And he thought it would help with the recruiting. Well, because I think of the fighting spirit, uh, the Marines were always sort of the first ones in and the last ones out when there was a, a war. Um, it was uh, mostly because he knew that they were hard-nosed. They would fight to the end. There was no quit in the Leathernecks. Um, he was involved in several battles where very few people survived. And uh, so I think him, most of the people that you'll meet in your life that were Marines are Marines forever. And they have that Marine Corps spirit in them forever. And that's sort of the way Rock Hansen was. He, he wanted to be, he wanted Western, the, the athletes at Western to be like the Marines. He wanted them to be fighters. He wanted them to be battlers. And he, uh, he wanted them to have that esprit de corps mentality and, you know, one for all and all for one and fight to the end. And, and when he got here, we were the fighting teachers. <laughs> and so I think he, he really had the Marine Corps spirit and he d didn't think that the fighting teachers was too intimidating. Hansen then went out and did what he needed to do to get permission to use the term Leathernecks as Western's athletic nickname. Well, at the time, I don't think anybody even believed that he could accomplish the task. Uh, the president of the university was all for it, but the only one involved in the process was Rock Hansen. He, because of his influence, because of his um, history in the military and his uh, um, heroic service to the military and because of the people that he knew through his time in the military and at Springfield College, uh, he was, a lot of people thought he was kind of crazy for going to ask the Department of the Navy for permission to use a nickname of one of the branches of the military because no school in the country ever had the opportunity. But because of his uh, Leatherneck history and tradition and his love of the Leathernecks, when he came here we were the fighting teachers and he wasn't impressed with that. He didn't think that was intimidating to our, to our rivals, so he uh, wanted to see about that. And Everybody told him he was crazy. Everybody told him there was no chance that it would happen. But in 1927, he received the approval of the Department of the Navy, and then it was approved by Congress that uh, we could use the nickname and the logo of the United States Marine Corps. It was, it was Rock Hansen, Ray Hansen, 1927, who had enough clout to get Congress to pass a piece of legislation in 1927 granting Western Illinois University the right to use the term fighting leathernecks by act of Congress. And we can use it as long as we don't disgrace the United States Navy or the Marine Corps. Um, and I believe that this is the only public university in the country that is allowed to use a, a term identified with the United States Armed Forces. Um, so we've had that since, since um, 1927. That same uniqueness is something that some people love about the university. I love it. I absolutely love the fact that uh, we have something so unique about us, uh, something that makes us special and different, and I think it's been a great marketing tool for our university for years. Reporting for News 3, I'm Kyle Sullivan.